Okay, my outstanding friends, this, I hope this works. We'll find out. This is in Belgium, and they're calling him their little Einstein. He got his PhD 15 years old. The first time in history anybody has been, well, quantum's pretty new, but it's he's the first one at 15 years old to get a PhD. Now, a PhD means that you have been taught, but he talks about logic, and this is where I really, and, and, and he talks about health and everything, he's, he's right across the board with what I'm talking about, so I would love to have some interaction with him. He speaks English, and I have my dipole electron flood theory, which is in the quantum realm, and then also I talk a lot about the, the enzymes and that fluid-filled highway has now recently been discovered to be a source of immunities. I mean, he's doing all the same stuff that I'm trying to do, too. And I'm not going to be here all that much longer, so I'd love to see this guy jump in on it. He's a young guy, very, very pleasant-seeming, you know, I, and, 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 well, let me show you what he has to say about being logical, about how physics is, it's just complete logic. You have to look at it, you have to think, and then you have to draw a conclusion. And basically, that's what he's doing. That's what I do. Now, this is a news report they did on this guy, this young Laurent Simons, or Simons, I guess it would be Simons. And he, uh, it seems like a very, very nice young guy. And his parents seem very nice too because they don't want him just jumping into this being a big shot at 15 years old. He's a kid still. Kids gotta do what kids do. Let him be smart, there's no problem with that, but you also gotta be a kid. They, they want him to move to some, anyway, forget about that. All right, this is about Laurent Simons. He's only 15 years old now. This goes back to four years ago, 11 years old. And he's talking about what he's hoping to understand about life. Already at 11 years old, I can see it's extreme depth here. He's being taught in academia about quantum. And he's a quantum physicist, basically. And he received his doctorate just recently at 15 years old. Now I'm going to show you what he had to say when he was 11 and then we'll go from there. Okay, this is uh, Laurent Simons and I'm just going to show you quick pictures because a lot of times they won't let you show the video. He's going to, this was when he was 11 years old. He was going to continue his masters in physics and get his quantum masters. All right, this is when Laurent was 11. He's 15 now. He just got his PhD in quantum physics. Now, I would love to discuss with him because he says also physics is very logical. He, he likes that. He likes to think. And I need somebody, a young person, to think in this realm with me. Laurent, I would love to discuss with you, my friend. And he speaks English very, very well. He's probably better than me. This, I tell you, this is exciting to me if I could get through to Laurent and speak to him about this. He's 15 years old. He's just in quantum physics as a PhD already. That means he should know everything that everybody else knows in physics already at 15. Belgium's little Einstein. Now, record time, way record time. The closest one, I think, was 21 by the time he got his. But quantum is a fairly new thing. But he, he's looking to do all the same things that I'm doing. He, he, he says, I, I, I want to see things that are logical. I, logic. Physics is so logical. That's why he's he did so well. Now, he may very well be the youngest person in the world to have earned a doctor in this particular field, although there's no real ranking system. He's just, he's just a hero at doing this, but thinking. And he says right away, he says, I want to convey this to my friends and so forth, the other kids. Do what you think is best and, and you know, 
search your dreams, do your dreams. He's, he's, he, he seems to have an extremely bright future. And I would love to per participate with him back and forth about dipole flood theory. How does it fit in with the quantum physics that he's, he's been taught? And, I, and show him how to do experiments too, because he, he was shown moving around little you know, electronic things. He's, he's into hands-on as well as in his mind, I hope. That's what I took away from him. And that's what I was. I was always making things and exploding things <laughs> and trying to figure stuff out, that's all. And I think that's the same thing we got here. And boy, I tell you, at 15 years old, that's a, you know, I, I'm right at the tip of the edge. So I need somebody to take this over, to my ideas, and, and either shoot them down or well, at least look into them. He just defended his thesis in the University of Antwerp, which he, you know, you have to present uh, your ideas of what the, what the topic is is really comes to, and that's what he did, and he's defended it. Now, I mean, I don't want to go against anybody, but what I have seen from mainstream physics is, if you learn what they're saying, I don't think you're going to get it exactly correct. We need to look at the details, and that's what he says. He says it's all about the details. All right, he sees into the details. It's very logical, physics is very logical. And he says, I love that, I do too. And he's into medicine and everything else. He wants to extend the human lifetime to make us immortal, I don't know about that, but he's got, you know, I want to talk to him about enzymes and the fluid-filled highway and the half-lifes and all that stuff because he's into all that. He says exactly the same thing I do. You see this? Stunning statement. He says, I want to go into physics because they give you the basics, but they don't provide you the details. <laughs> so he's trying to figure out the details, and, and that's what I do too. But I do a lot of experiments to show the stuff. I, I'm not a big paper drawing things and stuff like that, I, and, and following rules and all that stuff. I look at the logical things that I see just like I think he would too. I'd like to have him go back and forth with me. I, I would absolutely love that. And we could do that on the internet, and I'm, I'm yours, my friend, anytime. Okay, very briefly, and this is on the internet. It's called dipole electron flood theory. And instead of protons and neutrons being one big ball and then you can smash them into all kinds of different pieces. They're made up of tiny little dipole magnets. That's all they are. And there's so many of them, but the black can separate from the white. It's not like a bar magnet, you break it, you have two bar magnets. This, you can break the white off from the black. And that's, the white always covers the black. That's why we've never seen it. It's dark matter. Okay, it's extremely simple theory. You have a glowy particle and you have a particle that doesn't glow, it doesn't have any energy to speak of. This one has all the energy and no mass, that has all the mass and no energy. All it does is want to attract the white to come to it. And they will always be together. They will never be like this unless there's special circumstances that force them apart. And then the electricity is when they come back together. All right, so when you collect correct, when you make electricity, you're separating the white from the black, and then the white wants to come back to the black. That's what an electric current is. Gluons are like this. That also represents heat in my model. Photons are, as I will show you, back-to-back -back gluons. They have a field completely surrounding them, and they bounce. These two, this one doesn't. It's a, it has one here that wants to connect to something. It wants to be part of something else. This one says, I'm all right, stay away. Boring, boring, that's how you get light. And there's gonna be some changes to uh, the science in general and the standard model. is not that far off, actually, but it's the half-lives and uh, isotopes and all that need a little work. 
you know, I got to be honest with you. What really excites me is a young guy like this, young Laurent, saying he's interested in the logic. I want to see the logic of it. And these are photons. And they're, we use CMOS to see these. And that's a spray of electrons coming through the air. And they are red because they're going slow. They're spinning slow. Green spins faster. Same particle. Identical same particle. It's just spinning faster. And if you took light spins, it doesn't flap like a wave. It spins like that, like a drill bit. You see that? That's like us going, mm, drilling through here. Some hit way over here. Some hit way over there. But when they come through the the venturi, they push each other apart. And you get these, what they call interference patterns. And you can see across right here, this is exactly what a drill bit would do. These particles are banging into the wall here, basically, they're crushing against each other. And this is what happens. Most of them go through the center, some go this way, some go that way. And it makes a drill bit pattern because it's a slow. Red is very slow. Another thing I would like him to look at is, does this look like acceleration? Logically, does that look like acceleration? And this is where a subatomic nuclear explosion occurred, where the particles all broke into little bits and pieces all by themselves. And this is that place. All the black separated from the white, and only the white was allowed through here, making these huge showers. And the black came back together out, out here. Where it came from, I don't know, because I'm sure this didn't jump over the top and reattach over here. They talk about entanglement. Well, muon and electron neutrino are together, the black and the white, and the muon black one just goes by itself, and the white one goes into showers. Precisely what we saw. That is a subatomic, because it's smaller than an atom. An atom at least has one proton in it called a hydrogen, but it's really this. And this is really all bar magnets. So when it hits there, all of the black ones stay back because they're not allowed through. They have a certain size, and if you do this right, you can make it so that they won't go through and only the white goes through. White can go small, it can big, and that's, that's something that's understood. This is not under, I mean, Fermilab had all this stuff understood back in 2013, and we discovered this back in that time frame, but it was not accepted because there was a lot of reasons they wouldn't accept it, but the, you know, if he's logical, he's obviously gonna look at this and make a comment. If he's 15 years old, believe me, this is, I think, pretty valid. Now, at some point, I'm sure he's going to have to interact with this dipole electron flood theory. Is it the same as what he's learned and got his PhD in? Who knows? It could be. Because I see a lot of changes coming in the physics right now. So let's see. But I'm telling you, really warm my heart to see a young kid saying, I, I want logic. When I heard that, I said, whoa. All right, I love you all. Thank you. Bye.